Alrighty everybody, straight from the man cave again. Uh, I don't know if I'll continue doing that, but I could. We'll see as time comes. Uh, I got a couple emails about my battery setup and all my wind generators and stuff, so I'll try to explain a little bit, maybe. Maybe not, we'll see. But down here I've got 10 uh, Trojan Deep Cycle uh, golf cart batteries. They are T105s. They are 225 amp hours a piece. Uh, they are wired in series to get 12 volts and then uh, parallel to get all my amp hours up. So basically it's just one massive battery. Total it's uh, 1,125 amps. Uh, there's a couple options you have for hooking them up which many people don't know about. Maybe they do, I don't know. I didn't know about it at first before I started doing all this. But anyway, after you have them all hooked up, the second best way to hook them up to like your inverter or any of your DC loads or anything would be this, I don't know if you can see it, this uh, red one right here comes off this corner. Then you want to take the ground off of that back corner over there. Right back there somewhere. Anyway, that distributes your load across your batteries a little more evenly than let's say if you just took your positive up here and negative up right over there then most of your load comes from one side so you will actually drain down the batteries more here and then less all the way down so if you hook them up from corner to corner it kinda helps out a little bit there is one more way that uh, distributes them your load uh, more evenly but I don't know, I have to get more wires and stuff for that. Another thing you want to do is try to make all your wires about the same size throughout the whole thing. Because if you have a bunch of long wires and short wires, it kind of does the same thing here. I got a little voltage meter on there too. 12.31 is where I'm at now. And that right there is a desulfator. It sends pulses to your uh, batteries to vibrate all your plates inside to I don't know, prevent crystals and helps your battery life out. <clears throat> Have a dummy proof chart here for the state of charge. Uh, I don't know. I guess that's pretty much self explanatory. Oh, almost fell over. Here's a couple charge controllers I built. Uh, probably cost me, I don't know, 30 bucks to build both of them. I put a, let's see here, oh, we have life, yeah, we must have some wind outside, anyway, there's my volt and amp meters, they go up and down quite a bit, all the time, and there's a couple of uh, LEDs here, when we have wind, they light up, this one right here means that we're still charging, if the batteries were fully charged, it would switch over, and there's a green LED here, same with this one, red, it means it's charging, and once it's charged, this green one will kick in. Um, I might be able to show that to you with a battery charger. And if I was, batteries were overcharged, I still have to wire this in, but this is like a dummy load, you could hook up your lights to this end. So basically when all your batteries are charged, it would kick over to this, so you don't mess up your batteries. Same with this one, It's I still have to hook that one up too. This is a 2500 watt <clears throat> inverter, uh, 5000 surge, the big one, not that little one. And on the side here, if I can get over here, there's a voltmeter, and then the one that's not lit up is your amps that you're pulling, kind of let you know. This side, once it's all hooked up, I'll hook it up into my house uh, breaker panel. I'll just take that off and wire it right in. And I'm using the light right now off of this. I don't want to blind you. I have wires coming in the corner of my house. I just drilled a hole in the side and ran them straight down. I got two wind generators outside right now. And it looks like we still have a little bit of wind. Not much though. 
and uh, oh, I've got a thermostat down here just to keep an eye on the temperature. It is 58 down here. It's pretty cold. I think they say you want to be around 70 degrees, but it's winter time and it's damn cold out right now. <coughs> I'll show you my mess. <coughs> Another wind generator that I was working on for a while, and then I ran into the HHO stuff, so I kind of quit on that for right now. This right here is a solar panel that I built maybe about a week, week ago. I might put that outside today, maybe tomorrow, I don't know if I get time, we'll see. Uh, I bought all these single cells. Uh, just this cell right here. There's uh, 36 of them. I bought those off eBay. And I wired them all in series, soldered them all together, and put it in a piece of glass. Aluminum framing and wood and whatnot. This one will be probably about 70 watts if my math is right. Uh, I was never good at math, but we'll see. And I'm also working on another solar panel if you'll be able to see it oh yep bought these off ebay as well all these little cell these are a lot smaller but i have 32 of these going in a in one strip to get uh i think it was like 17 or 18 volts i got two strips right there i'll wire those in parallel once i get all strips done That'll give me hopefully around 60 or 66 watts. We'll see. Uh, there's one more strip over there that I'm working on. Here's the back side of it. Comes all the way down here. I still got to put that one right there to get my 32. And then those will be in parallel. I also have a bunch of uh, more motors and stuff down here that I'll make into wind generators or I don't know if I can get that HHO stuff going good enough maybe I'll use a lawnmower outside and hook one of these up to it and then I'll hopefully never have to buy gas again. This white one right here is an Amtec. Uh, let's see what was that 30 Amtec 30 motor and I think they came out of old tape drives. They uh, work pretty good for wind generators. This one right here is out of a treadmill. These black ones back here are Bodine motors, and I think those come out of like mail processing machines. I got those from a guy somewhere around here. These are AC motors over here that came out of treadmills too. Uh, those work pretty good. I mean, not or not those ones do not work very good at all for wind generators because it's AC but yeah so there's a couple extra motors here <clears throat> and uh, you can get a lot of that stuff off uh, Craigslist for free people throw their old junk treadmills out I've gotten like four or five of them taking them all apart come with some extra stuff you can use for whatever you want also, I'm getting a bunch of microwaves because they got magnets and all kinds of electronics inside you can use. Hopefully, I'll build a, a DC motor from scratch. I'll show you what the motors look like real quick. I mean, the uh, magnets are pretty big. Uh, I still have to take apart a couple of those microwaves to get more. And if I get enough, then I'll build a DC permanent magnet motor. I did have a vertical axis wind turbine outside. This is stuff made out of a treadmill too. Basically I had all these going around and all these over here. Basically all these, if I can get back far enough, were sitting on here. There was 12 of them. So when the wind blows from any direction it would spin this and therefore spin that motor and you're making electricity that way. Most of the stuff I got was free because that's, I don't know, that's the best way to do it. And that's it. Hopefully I answered 
some of your questions about all this. <clears throat> so, there you have it.